What is up, guys? I'm uh, gonna be giving you some post commentary over this episode because, like I said in the first one, the audio on the live commentary was kind of messed up and it just got worse in this part, basically. Um, so, start off. This here is the Emerald Herald, and this is how you level up in Dark Souls 2. So we're in Majula, and she's right by the bonfire, basically. So you go talk to her, enjoy the uh, dialogue. She's got some, basically, tells us what we have to do. But overall, have to kill four bosses and then go see the king, basically. But you'll be able to level up through this this NPC. Um, yeah. I'm really enjoying the game so far. I've probably played about three, four hours, and I would probably about an hour and a half of that I played when I was really tired, which was a mistake. I'd forgotten what Dark Souls can be like. It's not a game you can play when you're tired because you just you get lazy and you go on a dying spree. And I definitely did that, and it was like the dumbest death. There were a couple of funny ones though, so. There'll be a death montage in the Once next episode for sure. Return here to me. So that hope will not fade away. Okay, so it sounds like So yeah, basically this uh this individual is telling us that there's four four bosses, sort of like the Lord Lord Souls I gather from Dark Souls One. So we have to go kill them and then bring the souls to her. And then we can go see the king. And I don't know whether that's like the entire game or just like at the first part, like ringing the bells in Dark Souls 1, so we will find out. I've currently only beaten two bosses, so. Uh, yeah, you'll, you'll see that when it comes up eventually, so. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is where you level up, and you can also upgrade your Estus Flask through this character by finding Estus Flask Shards, uh, which I've only found a handful of so far. There's actually a couple here in this area in Majula, but you need some some keys there behind lock doors and stuff like that. But um, I'm enjoying the game so far. It's, it's very reminiscent of the original, it really is, and that is in no means a bad thing. I the only thing I'm sort of struggling with is uh, there's sort of some I don't know it's just little timing differences in the movement and the the combat the combat's slightly different pace wise I feel. Um, this first sort of nine minutes or so is all dialogue, basically. So if you want to skip forward, there will be actual progression happening. <laughs> it's a um, very interesting NPC, this one. It's uh, I, I, it's basically the crestfallen warrior from Dark Souls 1 who sat next to the, the Fire Link Shrine and then like eventually went crazy. That's what this guy... It's what he seems to be to me. <laughs> so they're doing lots of, That's not like, true sort of subtle nods to the the first game, which I like. It's nice. Me or anybody. It's uh, kind of depressing though. It's really so a de depressing vibe they've, they've gone for. It's kind of interesting. But um, yeah. Even I'm not certain. I'm told that the soul is the essence of life itself. Anything living, sentient or no, supposedly has one. Once again, the the atmosphere and just the overall vibe of the game, the sort of art direction and means is it's I don't know, it's just different and it's really refreshing to play. That's the real curse, right? It's, it's just delivered in such a unique way compared to what you normally get these days with 
And that's quite a Like triple A titles or whatever the hell you want to call. There are four beings in and wherever you go from here. Okay, I'm sorry, just power. See me here skipping through the dialogue. I was, I was like, alright, this guy's been talking for half an hour. And once again Everyone has the creepy little pedophile laugh. Oh, it doesn't matter. This guy is our blacksmith in Majula. Uh, it's pretty cool. He kind of looks like an orc here, but he's not. He's <laughs> just, I don't know, beard, bro. Looks badass. I'm a blacksmith. I'm nothing. So yeah, this is this is the new Andre, basically. Um, if you tighten up and stuff, you can upgrade your weapons here after you find the key to uh, oh. unlock him. Unlock that door for him. It's just another vendor. It's in the, the building on the left hand side of Majora. And I, well, I sell armor. And like he says, he sells armor. Sorry, I... And he st Please do have a look at my wares. stutters. I could really use the business. Everyone sounds so depressed in this game already. I like it. Okay, so this guy's got... There's actually some good armor and shields there that you can buy because I haven't really found any... Oh, I've found a couple of decent ones now, but at the very beginning you don't really find any good sh shields that block like any more than like 80% physical damage, so you, even if you block it you still take a little bit of damage, which is kind of frustrating to me. But um, yeah, you can get decent ones off him that block like 95 for a thousand souls or something like that. It's not too bad. Here we go, we pick up a tiny child, so begin hoarding those and we can upgrade the weapons. Um, the air stock is back, which I'm really, really happy about because that's like, that was one of my favorite weapons in the first game. It just had like a really cool move set and everything. You could hide behind your shield if you had to. And, uh, it was just a good all round weapon. It was fun to use. So that's back in here. I actually, I don't think I pick it up in this part. I'll pick it up in the next episode. Yeah, you see me just roaming around here. And I uh, turn around and get headbutted four times. And I absolutely crap myself. Like, there's a, like little pig things and. They nearly kill me, so I ran away. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Be careful. Oh, I'm dead, are we? Once again, another nod to the uh, the first game. With, I can't think of the cat's name in the first game that talked to the... You do have a rather the Forest Covenant, suit. whatever it was called. Hi, I can't remember. Like fond of. <laughs> Very cheeky, evil little snickering. Um, you can get some decent rings off her, as well as the Homeward Bones, the Luring Skulls, that sort of stuff. And she, you can abandon Covenant here, which is no... Um, no penalty for abandoning the covenant, I believe. I'm not sure whether that applies to all of them, but I think that might be the case. Which is nice. Okay. Onwards. We are finally over the dialogue and actually going to move on for a little bit here. I'm, I believe this is like the natural way that you're meant to go after just exploring that area. Um, that's pretty straightforward really, so I gather this is the way we're meant to go. Um, Another thing that they've done, uh, each time you die you lose a bit more of your maximum HP, so like your max gets lower, and also your character gets sort of 
rattier and rattier, more hollow looking. So they've like actually given that effect if you die more than once in a row, which I certainly did in my my rage segment. Um, the character just gets worse and worse looking. So they've really focused on, in on that sort of idea for the story of hollowing out and going crazy and all of that. I'm not a, a complete story fanatic in this game at all. Oh, it wasn't in the first one, but I find it very interesting the way that they present it and the way a lot of it's left sort of open to interpretation. It's a really, once again, just a different way to do things. It's really good. Now you can actually jump across here. You see me nearly slide off there, so be careful. But you can make this jump quite easy. But if you fall in between, there's it's just water, so you know you can't swim. You just die. Yeah, if you look around in these early areas, you can pick up plenty of little consumable souls that you can use to give you a boost to level up or get some weapons or rank up your weapons, that sort of stuff. So here we are in the forest of the fallen giants. It kind of reminds me of the DLC from the first game, um, Ulysseal a little bit. Just um, it's, it's a forest and it's daytime so that's about the only symmetry. Similar, uh, similarities. It's one of the hardest things in the first game is just figuring out where the hell you were at certain times. Get a little bit of action going again now. So I'm running into basic enemies. You see the new brutal backstab animation there. Um, it's a lot harder to pull off back steps, which I, I kind of like to be honest because it was it was very abusable in the first game. It took some of the skill out of it. It was still by no means an easy game, but like all of the the black knights and all that, yeah, that you could just cheese them with backstabs rather than parrying sort of thing. So, but the new animation is freaking boss. It's really cool. There's uh, actually a bonfire right there. You can activate at your leisure. You um, also notice that with the Estus fast that we got from the Emerald Herald, the girl at the start, you only get one charge to begin with. So that's how leveling it up works in this game. Um, if you find, like I said, the Estus flask shards. Then you can go back to her and level it up, and then you'll, that'll give you an extra charge. So if you find one, go to her. Then you'll have two Estus for us, then three, then four. And it'll have a cap of some level, I assume, I don't know. Yeah, I was sort of unsure at this early stage whether I should have been using the Estus Fast or the or the Life Gems, and probably ended up abusing the Life Gems a little bit. But and then I ended up running out of them because I kept dying because <laughs> I kept doing really stupid stuff. So this is another soul down here, I believe. Yeah, more souls. So. I think we went back to the bonfire after this. Yeah. Just to be careful. Be safe. Can't be too careful in this game. I was half expecting there to be like a trap here, but... Disappointingly, no. <laughs> the, um... Travel mechanics quite handy, really, especially because of how they've done the leveling up. That you can only do it through the Emerald Herald, or at least at this stage of the game, you can only do it through there. And um, yeah, it helps out a lot. So you see here, I actually had like completely forgotten about the whole respawning enemies through bonfires thing. <laughs> uh, 
you'll see in most likely the next part that when you go through an area multiple times and kill the same enemies over and over and over again, eventually they actually stop spawning, which is a nice sort of subtle way of making the game that bit that bit more um, accommodating to lesser skilled players, which that's that's pretty much me. I'm in that bracket, I think, sometimes. Sometimes. So like, in the part where I died lots and lots, eventually, um, a couple of the enemies at the start of the area um, stop spawning, and that sort of it, it helps progress you if you're struggling, sort of thing. That's really that's a simple idea, but it works quite well. So you can try and throw invisible walls here, which are back. I found one. It, it wasn't really invisible wall, but like it, you do something to give you a massive hint that there's something wrong with the wall. So be very careful when you come up this ladder, you'll get rushed by a bunch of guys, and you got a guy shooting arrows at you. I don't know what the deal is with this big knight by the tree. I I didn't attack him this time. <laughs> So it's like, I don't know, I just wanted to pro progress basically. And so I'm not sure if you get anything for not attacking him or you get some dialogue later. Well, that animation but he's basically not interested, but I assume if you if you poke him he will he will bite. He'll bite back basically. A cool little area anyway. See me here, just sort of looking at him, seeing if there's any dialogue options. But he's chilling there. I'm not bothering that guy. But yeah, he's, he's breathing. He's not stone, so he's there. <laughs> you progress through the fog wall, or there's a little path out here and up a ladder. You can actually see an item down here. Which is just above the bonfire we were at, by the river. Um, I'm not sure whether you're meant to jump from this spot or if there's a way to climb up there or something like that. But I I didn't get over there and I completely forgot about it to be honest. So I'm not sure how you get that or what it is. Most likely some souls or something like that. I always assume. Be very careful here. Uh, it's actually surprisingly easy to die here because it's because it's the narrow space. Uh, basically, you keep hitting the walls, and you seem to get very lucky there. And I don't roll off the edge because I think if that hit me, it probably would have killed me. And if I had gone off the ladder, I definitely would have died from fall damage. Um, fall damage, another thing, seems to be a little more realistic. In the first game you could fall about a mile and take quarter health, but in this one it's a bit more, it's a bit harsher I think. See me here trying to jump up, I don't, don't know what I was thinking, but uh, you have to try these things in this game, you never know. And when you do find something it's awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> what, here there's another item, I think it's, yeah, more souls, so. Again, you store these up and you can use them all to level up. You can actually use them all at the same time now, which is kind of nice because in Dark Souls, if you collected a whole bunch of them and you wanted to use them all, you'd have to do it individually. And you'd be sitting there for a little bit, but now you can use like five of them at the same time or whatever. So, and manage, manage the new jumping controls there just so. I do think it is a little bit better, but it's just getting used to it basically. Getting used to the controlling the camera and everything again. And it's been a long time since I played anything on on console really, so I think I played Dark Souls 1 at a friend's place a couple of weeks ago for probably a couple of hours and that's about it. For like a year, I reckon. So. <laughs> but it's good to be back. And you see there, I was just like mashing B, because in the last game you just used to hold B and you'd slide down. You have to actually hold down on the left thumbstick and B and you'll slide down the ladders. See, <laughs> see me again just playing around with this guy trying to get his attention. Hey. 
I was messing with him to see if I can get anything, but I didn't want to attack him because I didn't want to fight him, really. So, another fog wall here. No boss yet. No bosses for a little bit still, so. I, um, I was lucky in that the fog wall that I finally stopped at and I was like, alright, I need to go level up and shit because this is probably the boss, was actually the boss. So I was pretty lucky in that. There's actually another, there's two guys in this room, there's another one to the left. You don't see him here, so it's sort of baiting you to jump in. And <laughs> always be careful in these these hallways. You've got to be careful, you've got to use the camera. <laughs> see two guys come out here and I was like, oh. You see my fighting is quite sloppy. I feel like I'm starting to get back into the swing of things now, but at this stage I was still pretty, pretty rough. Um, just like looking at the stamina bar, the step managing that, I, I don't know. I've forgotten how to do it basically at this point, so there's some pretty stupid stuff. There's another item here, it's a bit souls. Bolts, so. See here, I was like, a, I was expecting someone to be camping in the corner again. And I looked away for two seconds, and this guy got hella aggressive on me. Gave him the beat, beat down back. This is you can definitely see how I uh, how I go on a death death rampage later. Because even these basic enemies can just do a number on you if you don't pay attention. Like it's pretty ridiculous. And when you start getting grouped, which is what happens a little bit later on when you have to deal with sort of three at the same time at a yeah, you can get overwhelmed quite easily if you're not paying attention. See, here I managed to uh, figure something up. Always be careful walking up stairwells in this game. Like boulders or random people and sitting in corners ready to drop down on you. I was actually expecting this guy to like drop down, but he is a firebomb dude. Oh, excuse me. Oh, good sneeze again. Oh. There's actually a couple of bros up here. So, once again, you just sort of a time when you attack these guys with when he's throwing the firebomb, so you know you're safe. So wait for till he does that, and then you can go attack these guys. And I actually almost died to this guy anyway, I think, from memory. Yeah. Yeah. Tried the jumping attack, and you only get dead. Guys, yeah, this guy just pitches the tent. <laughs> like, um, I like really wanted to do a jumping attack for whatever reason, and nearly died because of it. So. Walk onto an enemy through the floor, which is always helpful. Uh, coming up, kind of to the end of this little area, of the forest bit anyway. You move into like a. a it's sort of like a base, like a little fortress thing. But um, this is basi basically your undead, undead burg from Dark Souls One. Is basically what I would compare this area to. So, not too much of a struggle. Just like reminding you of the basics, and all of that. So. This is, is explore that area down to the left in the next episode, I believe. There's plenty going on down there. There's actually a couple of spots I still have to go back and suss out because I was too scared to go any further <laughs> when I dropped in. Another guy just sitting on the ground. One thing they do in this area 
quite a bit is just have enemies sitting down on the ground and they won't attack you unless you go right right up to them and they're activated when you go past them so you, you've got to be sort of checking your back your seats in the next area um, happens a couple of times I mean, there'll just be an enemy sitting down there and I'll forget that they're there I'll run past and then I'll get stabbed in the back and panic and die half the time so there's our next bonfire which I'll end the episode here after we talk to this little merchant I guess you'd call her I was uh, looking at it for a while trying to figure out where her face was and then I realized oh, that she has like a house on her back so <laughs> So you can poison, buy some poison stuff off her and all that. But anyways, thanks for watching guys. We'll be back with more live commentary and shit. Ciao.